Hello again and welcome to our final module, module 8 of our series on playing association croquet. I've called this module wrapping it up because it's about how we finish a game of association croquet and also I'm going to say a little bit about some of the background that you might want to read about or watch on screen. There are two ways for a game of association croquet to end. The first and most desirable is for one of the players to go all the way around the course and uh, hit the peg with his two balls. The second way is in a timed game and uh, a timed game is generally three hours. It can be a little bit less but three hours is the norm and in order to do that you need to have a, a timer such as this which must have an audible um, warning that the time has elapsed. So you set the timer for whatever it is, say three hours, and then at the end of the three hours the timer will bleep and whoever is sitting out will call time. And at that point, there we go, it's, it's bleeping away. So time is called. And at that point the person who's playing can continue to finish his turn quite normally. You don't need to stop playing, you just carry on until you've got as far as you can. You might even win the game in that turn. If they, uh, that player doesn't um, complete the, the, the game, he might make a leave for example, and then it's the opponent's turn to play and he has one turn left. He can come onto the court and again he can take as long as he likes, he can go around and win the game in that one turn. But after that, it's end of story. Unless there uh, is a requirement for there to be a definite winner. And this sometimes happens in tournaments. Someone must win. So if they end up with equal hoop scores after uh, both players have had their uh, period of, of play, then there can be an extension period to whatever time it takes for one of the players to score one more hoop or hit the peg, whichever. When time is called, any remaining bisques are cancelled. You may not use a bisque after time is called, but if it goes into that add-on extension period for the so-called golden hoop, then any bisques that were left can be reinstated and used again. So we're going to look at finishing the game. If you remember back to module five, I took my blue ball all the way around to, to Rover and the clip is on, on Rover. My black ball has come around and we're now looking at hoop six. My opponent has got his red clip on the peg and his yellow clip is on four back. So in other words, he doesn't need too much many more turns in order to finish the game. In fact, finish it in one turn. So I need to be careful here and I need to, to play quite well otherwise I will get beaten. So what I need to do here is to first of all run hoop six. Pick up my black clip my blue ball, my partner ball, is uh, quite close to the peg as you can see. It's my pivot. Now don't get the idea that a pivot must be close to the peg. That used to be the style of playing croquet. It's now changed rather. And a pivot ball can be anywhere on the lawn. It can be over there, over there, wherever. It's simply a loose ball which is going to help you. To, well, as I said at the very outset in module two, it's a stepping stone to get from there to here. And now what I need to do is to finish the game in this turn if I possibly can. So I've just run hoop six with the black. I need to do one back, two back, three back, four back, penult and rover in the one turn. And at the same time, get my blue ball peeled through rover. And so I need to nudge this ball as we're going round the course towards the rover hoop so that it's nicely placed for a rover peel. And I can't necessarily do it in a one -er. might like to, but that's quite difficult. So it's best do it in little stages and we'll have a look at how we're going to do that. First of all, I need to take croquet off the yellow ball. So I've come through hoop six with the black. I now need to 
rotate the yellow quite gently. So I'm taking croquet off the yellow. I want to put it down to hoop two back as my hoop two back pioneer and at the same time get my black fairly close to blue so that I can nudge it towards the rover hoop. So this is just a, a nice little drive. And you see where the pioneers got to. It's always better to be slightly short with your pioneers than try and get them too close to the hoop. If they go past the hoop, you're just making life difficult for yourself. So now I'm just going to nudge this blue a little bit further down towards Rover. That's all right, it's in, it's, uh, in line with the hoop, that's fine. So now I take croquet off the blue as my pivot and I'm going back to the red which is halfway between hoop six and one back. That's my one back pioneer. This is a thin takeoff. I'm leaving the, the blue here. Here we are, uh, just beside one back, and a little nudge will put the red in front of the hoop. The red's gone a little bit further. I'd have probably preferred it on this side of the hoop because that's where the other balls are, but it's, it's gone to the other side. Don't be tempted to play the, the red ball across the face of the hoop. Sod's law says that it will hit one of these wires and stick in the hoop, so avoid the problem. Just play it down this side of the hoop and take it easy. So through, through one back and so red becomes my reception ball, we've seen this before and as, as before get it clear of the hoop don't just tap it, get it well clear. I'm now taking croquet off the red. And in, uh, the, when we went round with the blue, I uh, croquet shotted the, the blue all the way down to three back in the far corner. I don't want to do that this time. I want red to be quite close to the rover hoop for a reason such as moment and then we're just going to tap the blue even a little bit closer to that hoop. So I'm just making sure that the red ball doesn't hit the peg there. So this is it's actually a roll shot. I want the black to be quite close to the blue. Red is now quite close to rover hoop and I'm just going to tap the blue quite gently again with the black, just nudging it a little bit closer to Rover. And taking croquet off the blue ball now and going across to the yellow for two back. Again, just a th another thin takeoff. And you notice the blue just rolled a little bit further towards that hoop, which is all good. So now just rocking the yellow quite gently. Very gently. Taking croquet, preparing to run the hoop. Just a little, a little drive come half roll. and nipper through the hoop. I want my yellow ball to go towards four back over in the far corner, but I want my black ball to end up quite close
to the blue ball in the centre. So I'm just going to rotate this quite gently. As this will give me stopping space in order to get the black ball to stop near the blue as well as the, 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 the distance to get yellow over to four back. So this is a cross between a, a half roll and a drive. A dead straight. So here we are. Um, this is my P lead, the blue, and I want to get that into a position somewhere around here. And you notice the red ball is here. This is what's called an escape ball, because this is not black's hoop. Black is actually for hoop three back over here. So in order to get there, I need to have another ball. In fact, this is really hoop three pioneer. So I'm going to play a, a gentle little roquet on the blue. Again, try to nudge it towards the, the hoop. There we are. A little stop shot, put the blue through the hoop. And you need to line these up quite carefully. I think that's all right. It's just a little nudge that way. Looking along the lines, yeah, that's okay. So this is a stop shot. Now I play my escape ball. I'd have really liked it to, to be over there somewhere, but uh, we we're a little bit short. I now take my blue clip off the rover hoop and put it on the peg. So this is one of those awkward shots where you're playing from the dead side of the hoop, which are always tricky. So I need to get my black ball the other side of this hoop. And of course my red ball is now becomes my reception ball. My black ball has rushed the red to here in the center of the lawn. I could easily just go down there and pick up the yellow and run four back. But my blue ball is still over by Rover where it was after I'd peeled it. I really need to get that back into the center of the lawn so that in a few strokes time, I can peg her out. So I don't want to leave it down there. So I'm going to go back from here, pick up the blue, and then come up to um, Roque Yellow. So I'm doing a thin takeoff again. So red is now effectively becoming my pivot, if you like. And I'm just going to go down the other side of blue. So I don't need to be too ambitious with this shot. I just need to hit her. So I'm going to do um, a roll shot, which will take the blue down towards penult and the black across to yellow. So I'm taking the balls in that direction because at the moment I don't have a penalt pioneer. So my black's actually come a little bit further than I'd have liked. I really liked it here so I can rush the yellow up to the hoop, but that hasn't happened. So I'm gonna to have to roll them up, which is not a good idea, but uh, needs must. So this is a roll shot to get black up towards four back.
So just popping black through four back. And as usual, it sails through for miles. So I need to rocket the yellow. Now I need to get uh, yellow down to Rover as my Rover Hoop Pioneer. Um, pick up the red and um, put the blue eventually quite close to the peg. So this is just a, actually we'll do a little half roll to get down to the red. So I've now got myself down towards the red ball. I'm just going to touch it. And with a thick takeoff, go back up to the blue, which is beside Penalt. So this is a thick takeoff. So this is quite a gentle tap on blue, just putting her on the right side of the hoop. So we've come through Penel with the uh, black ball, just a little simple roquet with the blue and I want to put blue quite close to the peg here and I've got a red ball also close to the peg so this is a very simple roll shots with the black going to the right of the peg as I look at it and, and the blue to the left. So I can simply now roquet the red and actually tip, push it down a little bit towards rover hoop. Now it's really important that you get at least one and possibly both of your opponent balls onto the uh, dead side of Rover so that you can play off one or both of them in order to get back to your own ball. Sometimes you can have a ball here, say, in case you just creep through the hoop and uh, you need to play it sideways. You could have a ball down by the boundary so that if you come through the hoop very strongly, you've got a ball down there that you can play off. As it happens, I'm all right and uh, I can play off either of these. I'm actually going to play the, I'm going to rush the red down towards blue because that's a nice easy shot. So here we are, I'm just simply rushing red down towards the peg. And I'm taking croquet, a thin takeoff just to get my black close to blue. And from here, just a, a tiny little nudge on blue. And so I'm lining them up and in the croquet shot, blue will hit the peg and then in the continuation shot, black will follow suit. And if balls are any distance from the peg at all. You need to be very careful about lining them up because if you miss with this shot, you're in trouble. Just knock that out of the way. And there we are. And that's the end of the game. There are one or two rules that you need to be aware of about pegging out. You notice that my opponent had put his clip on on the peg having run through all the hoops. That's actually quite a dangerous thing to do because if we got to this situation where black had come through Rover, I could actually 
peg him out, take that ball away, and then I can continue to play with my black. Um, what I've got to be careful of is that in that shot, my black doesn't hit the peg as well, because then both balls would be pegged out. And uh, that's why you generally tend to leave your clip on rover rather than come all the way around to the peg because once the ball is pegged out my opponent has only one ball left in his case the yellow and if he's got a long way to go that makes life very difficult in any case the only ball that can actually peg out another ball is a ball that's run rover a rover ball so called and in the um, handicap game you're not allowed to um, peg out your own ball until both balls have run rover. The aim of that is to prevent a really good player going all the way around in one turn, pegging his ball out and leaving his less skilled opponent with only three balls to play with. Um, so it, it, it's, it's a way of trying to even things up. Now, but in, in generally speaking, in the level game, once a ball has gone through rover, if it hits the peg, even accidentally, say that you're shooting from one ball to another and your ball hits the peg and it's, uh, and it's for the peg, then um, that ball is off the lawn. So you must be very, very careful. Again, another reason for not going to peg until you really have to. Leave your clip on rover um, to avoid accidents. You might be tempted to go out and buy a book about croquet. My advice to you is don't not until you're very familiar with all the terminology because they tend to blow your mind. Um, and I put out here as a little selection of books over the years, starting with C.D. Lowcock in 1907, Lord Tollemache, about 1910, and then a, a, a phalanx of very, very good croquet players, um, Morris Rickett, Pat Cotter, um, David Miller, John Solomon, and uh, Stephen Mulliner in the 19... 60s and 80s and then a couple uh, about uh, actually the, 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 the more the mechanics plus one on time by uh, Gaunt and the skills of the game by Bill Lamb and all these have a significant drawback they're printed in black and white and when you come to look at some of the diagrams you have to have two brains to work out which ball is meant to be which the book that I can unreservedly recommend is this one called Complete Croquet by James Hawkins. This is a relatively new book. You can get it from the CA shop and it's printed in full colour. So you don't have any problems about working out which ball they tend to be talking about. And these are all really aimed at uh, developing players. There are one or two books which are aimed at the really, really very good players who play croquet in a somewhat different style from the way that I've been showing you on the films. It's a, it's a rather more complex game. And this trend was started by a guy called Keith Wiley who wrote this book in 1986, Expert Croquet Tactics. And very recently, uh, the CA, with uh, the help of a number of current world standard players have written this book or produced this book uh, beyond expert croquet tactics and um, don't try reading these if you're fairly uh, new to the game you need to have a handicap of probably seven or less to be able to get anything worthwhile out of them but the rest of them are very good and for a beginner's book I can do no better than recommend the Know the Game book. This is a very old version of Croquet, and that's a good introduction, and then follow it on with James Hawkins' book. And you also really need to have your own copy of the laws. In the films, I've tried to paraphrase the laws to make them a bit more approachable, but you do need to be aware of what the laws actually say in reality. Now, actually, these days, there's less and less incentive to go out and buy a book because so much is available to you for free on the Oxford Croquet website. And this is, this is a wonderful website put together by Ian Plummer in Oxford and uh, it covers more or less everything you need to know about croquet. And Ian has 
built some wonderful uh, virtual lawns where you can see all the balls going round and uh, he's even got the sound effect on there. Uh, so do have a look at that. It is, it is absolutely splendid. And if you look on the Basingstoke website, you will see some um, examples of what I call what would you do next. And these are simply PowerPoint slides given a particular situation uh, in Association Croquet and then asking you how you would solve that. And I then put down the solution. There is one other thing to say about croquet. I've been talking about essentially the handicap game. There are various versions of croquet. There's handicap, level, advanced, super advanced, and you can shorten the game by reducing the number of hoops to 14, 18, 22 that are played. Um, I find the shorter games slightly less than satisfactory because um, you, you, if, if you're playing against someone using bisques, you need to have all the, uh, uh, the, the, the time and the distance that the game has to go in order that they can uh, you fluff their bisques, basically. Now, the bisques are actually reduced for shortened games, and there is a table in the um, laws book which tells you how many bisques, bisques people have can have in the various shortened games. But nonetheless, I prefer a 26-point game any time. I just want to mention a couple more things. If you're interested in the history of croquet, there are two relevant books, uh, one by David Pritchard uh, from 1981 called The History of Croquet, and then 10 years later, a lady called Nikki Smith wrote a, a similar book uh, not quite as erudite as this, uh, called uh, The Queen of Games, The History of Croquet. And uh, uh, both these, in fact most of the books that I've just shown you uh, are no longer in print. Um, you can get them secondhand by one of the various uh, uh, web pages where secondhand booksellers are listed. But the CA in 1997 produced a little handbook about the, the uh, history of the CA itself rather than the general history of croquet. The CA uh, 1897 to 1997 and you, you can still get this from the CA shop. And then just very briefly about coaching and where you can get coaching. Uh, most clubs have a, 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 an association croquet coach and uh, they may well work to this book, the association croquet coaching manual which you can again download for free from the CA website but uh, and this re this is really for coaches but it it outlines the sort of things that you should be aware of at various stages of your coaching career and there are formal coaching courses offered in various places particularly uh, the three academies so called the uh, uh, croquet academy at Southwick near Brighton the Southwestern Academy at Budley Salterton and the Northern Academy at York. And in the, all those places and in certain other places, uh, well qualified coaches run courses on specific things. And uh, this little book is by one of our best known coaches, Cliff Jones, and he talks about every single stroke that's possible to play in association croquet. Now, normally I think you have to go on one of Cliff's courses in order to buy one of these, but uh, sometimes he can be prevailed upon to sell you one if you contact him. But there we are. Now, I hope that uh, within that uh, little series, you, we've raised your interest in association croquet. It's a wonderful game. It, taxes you beyond belief sometimes because it's really, really exciting when people are getting up to the peg together and it could go either way. Um, association croquet is sometimes thought of by people who don't know much about it as being slightly boring because one player is sitting out. Well, people sit out at snooker as well and I don't think snooker is generally regarded as being a boring game. So go out, join a club if you haven't already, go and play association croquet get some good quality coaching and enjoy yourself.